Welcome. We are here to give you a demo of how Clutter Dart makes UI development in Clutter blissful. And Clutter Dart is a rather recent Clutter dialect. It has been a, it has been a public for about one year and a half. We released it in spring last year, and uh, we have been working on it uh, for about three years. And so it's a closure which compiles to Dart. So we named it Closure Dart because we were not feeling very inspired. And why Closure Dart? We were looking for options for doing UI programming in Closure or Closure Script. And we were not satisfied, satisfied by the options which were available. And at the same time, Flutter, which is a UI toolkit, was, pro was promising to, to allow the developer to target all platforms, mobile and desktop, and even web, using a single framework. And the only drawback of Flutter is that Flutter was tied to Dart, a language. And so to write some Flutter, you have to write some Dart. And Dart didn't, didn't uh, feel very, very palatable to, to us as, as closureists. And so rather than learning to, to write Dart and, uh, and suffer the boilerplate, we preferred to write a new closure compiler. And that's how Closure Dart was born. But still, Dart has some, some very interesting strength. First, it's Dart allows you to produce native binaries for iOS and Android, but also for macOS, Linux, and Windows. And you can also pr produce non UI, non UI, uh, well, non, non graphical UI binaries to be able to to have some quick command line utilities or some fast starting cloud functions so that is very interesting it it's a client language they actively remove feature like reflection for example that would uh, prevent good tree shaking and good performance at startups so it's an interesting target as a language for a dynamic language. But still, it, its main goals of having decently sized binaries and fast started make it a good fit for a lot of applications. And last, since it's, it compares to native, it offers FFI to C, but it also offers FFI to the platform languages. And by platform languages, I mean on iOS and macOS, Swift and Objective-C, and Java and Kotlin on uh, Android. So it means that you can call directly the, into the, the platform libraries right from Dart. And if you can call them from Dart, you can call them from Closure Dart. And it's pretty cool. Last week or the week before, we 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 just called into U, UI Kit, for example, to use some function right from Pressure Dart. Um, last, Dart also compiles to JavaScript, and there's work ongoing work to have it work on Wasm GC, but I don't believe that any browser has shipped Wasm GC yet. And when you compile to JavaScript, you have two options, either to use the traditional DOM or to use Flutter. And this brings us to what is Flutter exactly. Flutter is a UI toolkit which owns the whole rendering pipeline. So it offers pixel perfect rendering across all platforms. It will render the same in the same way on all platforms on all platform, unless obviously you, you chose to customize the rendering for one platform or the other. For example, have some transition be, depend, be different on 
iOS or Android or have a different layout and desktop and so on. And despite being built from, from the ground up, from pushing pixels on the screen, it doesn't forget accessibility, which is built in at the same level as rendering. So all assistive, assistive technologies like voiceover are going to work on, uh, on Flutter application out of the box. From a developer point of view, Flutter is kind of a post-react uh, framework. By, by that, I mean that you deal with immutable description, a bit like the virtual law, immutable description of the UI. But the difference is that, the main difference is that what is below the, the immutable objects is in into your reach. So if you need to create a, a, wild, a widely different widget of what is already available and something that you can just compose out of existing widgets, you'll be able to do so in Closure Dart. You won't have to, to drop to Objective-C or Swift or whatever was the language. You can do everything in Dart or rather in Closure Dart. And Flutter is, very, is a very big and growing community. There's very little overlap between the both communities, the Closure community and the Flutter community. So we may be oblivious to, to the size and, and the existence, but it's there. It's big, there are, there are tons of widgets in Flutter proper, but there are tons of widgets in third-party pack, third packages. And Flutter has excellent documentation. Since Flutter, through Dart, compiles to JavaScript, documentation contains live uh, example. So it, it's very easy to get started. You don't have to, to search a lot for, for good documentation. And all these qualities of both Flutter and Dart and obviously of Clojure makes writing Dart with Clojure Dart really joyful. And Baptiste is going to give you an, a live coding lesson of how to use Clojure Dart. Okay, am I live? Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so uh, we are going to make a tiny application um, in the next 30 minutes or so, and yeah, from scratch. So what you want to do is go to closure.org, which we direct to our GitHub. And <clears throat> Here you have your first tab uh, paragraph. So basically, <clears throat> a clo uh, so Closure Dart, the Closure Dart compiler is uh, a pure Closure library. So you just add it to your project, and then you have these options, the, uh, the main entry point, and if it's a Flutter project or that project, then we in it we are in the other project. We only have devs.edn, and we want to initialize the project. And then we're just going to copy paste some example to get started. I'm going to. Um, an iOS simulator. Okay. And then what you want to do is launch the closure that compiler with auto reload. So let me find 
code. Okay. <clears throat> so we started with this, the, the, the TDN only file. Oh, I have to specify my device. We started with that, then the project initialization created um, some specific Android iOS file, macOS, Linux. And then we created this space. It has main function that is specified in depth.edn, this function. And this is the function that is run when we when we start our application. And it's a dummy <clears throat> application. We have only a material application with a nav bar here and some centered text. So basically, everything you see here is a widget. This is a widget. This is a widget. This is a widget. This is a widget. Um, there are widgets for everything in uh, Flutter. We import here a pure uh, Dart package. And to do so, we only need to use string, strings compared to, to a pure closure package. Uh, yes, Christophe? Yeah, no, I was the same compared to, to a symbol for closure. Yeah. And tell me about it. What are the symbols which are preceded by a dot? Right. So let's take the text widget. If we look at the documentation, so api.flutter.dev, and I'm looking for text. Um, all right. If I. I don't know. Okay, text. Um, you see these, this map. These are name parameters, and there are lots of name parameters in uh, in Flutter. And the way we use and it. The first in one, and the first one is a positional parameter. It's right. out of uh, the curly braces. The first one is a positional one. And in Closure Dart, you, you just have to write a symbol uh, with a dot at the beginning um, to, to tell a Closure Dart that it's a name parameter. Uh, where was I? So let's say I want to modify this color. I save the file, and then it's blue. Same here. OK. Uh, perfect. So let's do um, to do list to be uh, that can be fun. Uh, so to do a to do list, I'm going to for the latest view widget. OK, so I need to be in a not incognito. We uh, browser. And sorry about that. Okay. So we need a list view and a list view. Oh, if may I interrupt? I forgot yeah. to mention there are an official Flutter YouTube channel which has which has a lot of very useful videos, even some rather technical one. So worth watching. And there was exactly. a demo at the top. So the issue widget is one of the most popular widgets. And you have lots of the options that you can use. But basically, we only need, for simple cases, a list of children. So if I write, uh, I put it list view children and 
we can write this, save it, and here we go. We have two, uh, two text, two text widget now. Um, there are default list uh, style, which are nicer than uh, a default uh, text. Yes. So, May I point out that you just use a vector where a list of widgets were right. as expected. It's because in Closure Dart, vectors are list. They can be used as list of any type. It's a bit like in Closure, where vectors can be used as Java list and maps as Java maps. There's the same level of, of interoperability, interop excuse me, between, uh, between Dart and Closure Dart. You, exactly. can, you can consume Dart collections using ends, get, and so on, and you can pass Closure collections as a Dart collection. And if you really want to use Dart, you can use Dart, uh, like in JavaScript, you can use a pure, uh, that list. In closure script, sorry, you can use pure that list. But here we are using a person vector. And you see that uh, it's asking for a list of widgets, but our persistent vector is also a list, and the compiler automatically casts it for you as a widget. Anyway, so we have a tool list style, but what would be uh, as yeah, Sorry? Can you, can you increase the font size? This one? No, in the simulator, the, the list tiles, they are very small. OK, so let's add some text style. Uh, and you have font size 32. So what we want is some kind of checkbox. Uh, do you have any kind of? If I take a look at it, it was in the wrong so style. Checkbox. Oh, there is a checkbox style. And if I look at the constructor, is a one. So this, this adaptive one, when you see adaptive in a, in a widget, it means that it's going to uh, take the default iOS or Android or macOS um, uh, look and feel uh, on the platform. Yeah, so, it's, a, it's a new feature which has been introduced in. So let's try it. In June or something see, like that. Here we see that value and unchange are reprised. And we also have title like before. So you can use this. And value false and change. So unchange is a function that returns nil and takes the value and change it. So for now, I'm just going to this. And perfect, we have a bit of checkbox. So now that we have um, the UI, um, let's introduce some state. state. I'm going to create a global um, atom application state. So it's an atom with a vector of title by some elk. It's not done. Um, uh, 
Usom spot. Usom spot. And then. OK, so we have an item uh, with two items. And what, what we can do here is extract this and use our favorite function. And we are going to listen to Ivan here and title here. And that's it. So, let's uh, Oh, since it's uh, deaf once, I need to auto restart uh, the state. Okay, and it's true. Okay, so I derived the app state, but that's not the way to do it uh, if you want uh, the list to be refreshed when the app state change. In uh, cgd.flutter, um, it's a tiny library we wrote that is shipped with the compiler, the closure.compiler, and it basically has um, two micros, F1 and F widget, and they take the same options uh, to basically to unload states for you and all sources and so on. So, for example, if you watch uh, an app state, what it's going to do, it's going to rebuild the widgets below every time app state changes. So that's exactly what we want here. Um, it's not changing right now, but uh, it will be in the future. So we want to watch the application state. And here, we put the state here. So every time application state is going to change, this is going to be rebuilt. Note also that you can only watch, uh, watch uh, a specific um, pass in a tree. Uh, you, it, if you want to, you don't have to, to rebuild all your widgets uh, when uh, a value changes in your item, which is very convenient because, of course, your application states can grow uh, very fast and you specifically only want to listen for specific um, property. Anyway, so we have this. Just to, to recap what uh, Baptiste j just showed, uh, state here is going to contain a snapshot of app state. And so the, it's kind of a dereferencing binding where the, the left-hand side is going to be bind to a snapshot of the right-hand side. And the right-hand side can be an atom, but can also, de, also be a future, a stream, a, 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 a whole host of, uh, of options are possible. And uh, it's based on the protocol, so you can even extend it to to new watchable things. Exactly. OK, so let's add some style to the text. For example, if it's already done, we might want to have a line through it. If I take a look at text at the text widget, it has some style. And style can have some decoration. And in decoration, you have line through the line and the line. Uh, so let's try it. Text style. I'm not a big fan of 32. Uh, decoration. Decoration. Line through. OK. 
Okay, and um, we only want it. Uh, it's done. If it's done, line through. Otherwise, it's Perfect. Okay, so when we click here, I want this to be unchecked, um, the checkbox. We have not implemented the callback yet, so let's do it right now. Uh, when we click, what we want to do is swap our item in the, okay, I an index here, indexed. I want to change this, this. Uh, and no, I'm going to name the username parameters. Excuse me? No, it would be clear, clearer if you use a proper FN. Okay. It's all and then. So then. It's all done. And what I want to do here, and I forgot X. I want to update in IDX and the props so are done. And I want to apply the not function. So if I click, perfect. Nice. Okay. Excuse me? It's alive. Yeah. OK, so what we can do now is we can add a way to, to add new items. Um, if we look at the scaffold widget, um, there are interesting examples like this one. Uh, this is a floating action button. And um, yes, it's perfect for us. So when we type plus, it's going to, so to, uh, to open some model. Um, there is this model that could work. Perfect. So basically, when we click on the plus, we are going to open this. So to do so, we just have to copy this. Action button. I'm going to my scaffold. And Okay, so we do have the plus button, which does nothing. And to show model, we just need to call the function show model bottom sheet. And yeah, let me copy everything. Oh, sorry. Where is the function? Yeah. Okay, let me copy everything. It's going to be easier. Um, I only want this.
Okay, and let's just add a text. Okay, so back to I think that you forgot it's a builder, so it should be a function. Right, exactly. And I I forgot to remove all of this dot code. Okay, and so Chumel is a builder, so I can use F build, which is exactly like F reject. It takes the same option, but it returns a function. And this returns nail, and it takes a context. So to add a context, we can just use the context option of fram, fbuild, or f widget. So it binds next to this. Um, maybe Christophe explain when we need a context, when we finish. Well, we, we rarely need a context. Most of the time, the, the utilities of Treasure Dart Flutter is, are going to hide the context from you. But uh, there are some APIs which require you to use the context. And the context is basically the, the place where the, the widget is going to be built. So it's the actual place, it's a pointer to the actual place in the actual hierarchy, the real, the real mutable objects where the, the widget is going to be inflated, as this is the official name, into a proper component. Yeah, but basically you, you conjure a context when when, when an API requires you to do it. Okay, so when pressing the plus button, we have the A text, but what we do want instead of a text, we want some kind of input text in Flutter, input text or text field. Um, and I'm only going to use, same here, you can customize everything, but I'm only going to use unsubmitted callback to, to get the, the value um, of the text you entered. So uh, do we have any example of text field here? Perfect, let me copy paste this. Okay, so yeah. the best example it was a password. Yes. Mm. I like the decoration. <clears throat> yeah. And to do, to do item, okay. Okay, so if we click on plus, add to do item, but of course, unsubmit, we do nothing, but we can double check that. Cool, cool, unsubmitted. Value print B. Uh, click here. Yeah, so I have the value. So <clears throat> it, makes, it makes me think of uh, why why Batis did just use uh, dot core print and not uh, println. If you use println or prn to print, it will it will not show in the console, but it will show in the Flutter Dev Tools because we failed to mention the Flutter Dev Tools, which are very good. I've not, no, no, I, uh, I plan to show it at the oh, end. Sorry. I'm reading your script. <laughs> anyway, so when 
I submit this item, I want to add at the end of the list my to-do items. So I want to a global of states and use conge title, which would be V and don't false because you just added it. So hello world. It's working. And once it's submitted, I also want to close the navigation, the bottom sheets navigator that context. So here, test, perfect. But perfect. Yes. As, as we see, uh, Flutter code tends to be very nested because they, they use widgets for everything. Yeah. I mean, padding is a widget on, of its own color and so on. You, there's a, I believe they use the term of aggressive composition. So they yeah. use composition a lot, but it tends to create deep hierarchy, hierarchies and very nested code. Yeah. Um, can you do something about that? Right. So with our three macros, fram, fget, and uh, fbuild, so th this one is pretty rare, but anyway, uh, you can so because uh, so many widgets um, have a child property, uh, let's find, so for example, here center as a child and its column. It contains our above. Now there's a child and so on. It's very common. What you can do is write, instead of writing and center the child, uh, and text, you can extract this and write and text like that. Basically, um, we you can extract one name parameter, uh, and if it's child, it's automatic. So, for example, here I can do this, 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 this. Them here, and I can because there is no child property here. I can remove the children one, and instead of having nested code, it's flattened. See, and so we saw earlier that properties, the watch properties, and the context one. Um, you can interleave option, uh, options, sorry, you can interleave options everywhere and between widgets. So context, watch, and we have other options to do animations and so on. Um, perfect. So what we have the power of macros. Yeah. <laughs> we can add widgets. Because as you can see, I have to click because it's not focused. So I will go focus. I'm not looking at the dog because I, I know this property. Let's see. Perfect. So now it's automatically focused. Why don't don't we see the keyboard? Uh, OK. So if you want to see the keyboard, so Ooh. now it I I enabled it here keyboard. So if we have the software keyboard, it's hidden behind. Uh, let's fix that. So on uh, any iOS uh, or iPad device, you have what we call the what is called the software keyboard. This is what we use uh, on a day, daily basis. Uh, but, if, but if you plug um, an hardware keyboard, you won't have it. 
So, um, to get the um, adding the the, spe the the eight sorry uh, taken by uh, by the software keyboard, we have this media query object. The get options. Take a look at the doc. Media query. You have this of options that take a context and returns a media query data. And then on the data, you can check the view insets where the software keyboard uh, uh, is, and then uh, recreate um, the proper padding. Uh, because it's very boring to create a context and all the time to have um, these objects, because the of static method is um, almost everywhere in, uh, in Flutter. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a very pervasive, pervasive convention. And so we, it's another place where we try to, to remove the need for a context because contexts are a common source of error in Flutter code because you have many context variables laying around and you mix, you don't use the right one. So we tend to ID it with the with own macros so that you always use the right one without knowing it. Okay. So basically, this will bind the media query data to media query. But we can even go further. We can unwrap um, crops. So the property was you insets. And I can bind it. So in Closure Dart, you can um, uh, destructure properties, uh, which is really cool because we have lots of properties. And for example, view inset is an edge inset, and we only want the bottom one, the bottom uh, edge. So I can even do. Uh, Button. So in addition to keys, STRS, and SIMs, we have fields in the... Uh, so now I can use a padding widget with padding option age insets. Only bottom and use the button that is bind to the value. And now, perfect, my it goes up. So, done, perfect. Um, and Christophe, if you want to, if we have time, we, we are going to round stuff a little bit. Um, I think last, uh, thing we could do is to delete, to show how to delete uh, um, a to-do item. Usually on a mobile, you can swipe um, left or right to delete an item. And there is a widget for that, like always. So its name is dismissible. Um, it's really easy to find the widget. Uh, it's just that I know them, so I'm not looking aggressively for, uh, but uh, basically you, you type uh, in Google what is the proper widget for swiping, and here we go. So dismissible takes a key, a child, and when you dismiss, there is this callback that is a function, and it, it has uh, the dismiss direction. Um, the key here is used to rec recognize which, um, so when, we, when you have um, siblings that, are the that have the same type, uh, uh, we need a way to recognize them and that's what key is used for. 
So if we go back to the checkbox style, we want a dismiss and dismiss. We get um, now that I've introduced F widgets, I can dismiss it all and it takes a key. So we are going to build a value key with some kind of ID. So we're going to add an ID and so the child is automatically wrapped by FWJet. Remember when adding stuff and there is this callback. So and this callback we don't care about this argument. Um, so let's give some ID one, two, and here when we create the to do, let's see. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so when we let's try. Perfect. Uh, Christoph, can you mute yourself, please? Because uh, there is some. Oh. Mm, not sure it's on my side, but yeah. Okay, no problem. So when I dismiss, what I want to do here is in the add state, um, I want to set back S. From zero to index, and then set back S from X index uh, to the end. Okay, and that should be it. Since okay, perfect. So that's interesting because it's a pure uh, Flutter class uh, error. Sorry. And um, what happened here is okay, maybe this okay, okay, so it's working. So sometimes when um especially when um you're using a key, you have to at restart uh, to have a, a new fresh state, state. So, hey, hey, done. And here we go. So now we have um, uh, dismissible items and we can even add a background. And a background I want. So background is a widget, and I want a container that is red, equals red, with some texts that I want to align. And I don't remember alignment. Oh. Yes, no, not this one. Center right. Alignment dot center right, and let's write some text. Delete, and I want the text to be white because it's a red background. So textile and color and colors white. And so let's check. We have now we have a, a closure dot completion error. And it's telling me that a line is not a valid name and it's alignment. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So let's restart from a fresh state. Perfect. So we have the delete. Uh, we might want to uh, increase the font size. So font size. Uh, oh. OK, 
okay and we might want to add adding and adding adding sets um, yeah only right 12 okay perfect and even some font weight font weight and font weight i think it's font weight let's try let's try that Perfect. Awesome. Um, so I don't want the right one. I only want the left one. So if I go on my dismissible presentation, there is a direction and dismiss direction. Uh, and to start seems nice. So dismiss direction and to start. And now, if we go, I cannot swipe. That's, I can only swipe like that. Perfect. Um, okay, so we have pretty much anything. Uh, Christophe, do you think we we have time to round the corner here? You didn't say that you show the dev tools. Okay, so in the terminal, if you press, if you enter question mark, it's going to give you this address and you can even i think it's v yeah so if you press v it's... the v is not secret it was listed in the output of the question mark uh, yeah so uh... <laughs> we don't have nothing that's real Hmm, yeah. Demo effect. Demo effect, but usually... Go into select widget mode and see if you can select it. Yeah. So you can select it. As can select first... it. it doesn't update and... Yeah. The world, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, demo effect, but basically you have a tree of widgets. Let me try to uh, write this. Okay, I don't know what's happening. That's the first time this happened, but basically, usually, trust us on <laughs> or don't trust us. You try to restart the application. You mean uh no I get to restart. Yeah. Okay, no luck. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Okay, might be a bug. Uh anyway, you have uh, you should have the the um, the, the tree of widgets so you can uh, explore. So basically this is there and you can explore everything uh, in your application and see properties, um, try to understand why some layout is not uh, centered or stuff like that. And it's when it's working. Uh, uh, you it, have the, prof the profilers and so on. A lot yeah, of yeah. Things, and it can work also on actual devices. You have a profiler that can profile um, release um, uh, release build uh, frame by frame. So, for example, you can see the raster thread 
where the time is spent and you have the same for the UI um, here. Uh, yeah. So it's a, a very simple application and we don't have a, we don't have lag here, but, uh, and if I click here, track, rebuild, and I go there, okay, I type here, then you see that the raster has, the raster thread has more work, and then you can go widget by widget, you can try to understand what's happening. Uh, anyway, it's pretty good. And the inspector, when it's working, um, yeah, so for example, if you select a widget, sorry, select a widget here, this one, uh, it's going to be yeah, dumped and you can read the properties. I don't know why it's not showing here. It's, uh, it's okay. Um, yes, I think that's it. Uh, do you think we have time to round? Is it interesting to round stuff here? We, yeah, we can. Okay. So this happens on show model bottom sheets. And if we take a look at the doc, show model bottom sheet, there is this shape, which could be interesting. Let's take a look at the shape. Uh, I like this rounded rectangle border. And okay, so let's try to shape. And we are going to have a border radius of. Uh, Circular, yeah, border radius circular. Uh, yeah, and let's write two. So I can. Oh no. Yeah. No, what's happening? But so so we have also this clip option, clip behavior option. And without entering too much into details, uh, we are going to use the anti-alias clip. So clip behavior uh, here and and clip alias. Um, yeah. Um, what we could also do is remove this. And add some add some padding on the um, right and left. So this is useless. And maybe you could also remove the, the first A. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What? No, I was thinking that you should remove the eight at the moment you were removing the, the eight. Symmetric. Re... No, that's. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. 
I think we are done. Uh, thanks a lot for listening to us. Maybe. Uh...